Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com using time honor techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. It is the 2nd of January 2012 and uh, kind of enjoyed the break uh, over the weekend. I hope you have too. I hope you had a, a safe New Year's. Uh, if you celebrated and if you didn't, well, I hope it was safe in not celebrating it. That was my decision. And um, before we get started, I just need to remind you once again that the website and this video are for educational purposes only and that nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. Even if I was, I wouldn't feel uh, qualified to tell anybody what to do with their money. Really, I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's uh, take a look at our first video for 2012. Okay, we are looking at a 10-minute chart. And you can see that uh, the markets were kind of weak on, um, on a, uh, uh, Friday. That's the day it was. Um, uh, not terribly weak, just kind of lackluster. I, I will say that this parallel potential trend line that I had uh, snapped that's parallel to this top line, uh, that did get violated. Uh, but um, I think we need to realize that. But I I'm not super concerned at this point um, because it, it didn't, again, it didn't have that typical falling off a cliff kind of a break of this line. As a matter of fact, it just sort of squeezed out sideways. I, I would rather um, wait and see before I say that this is definitely, that this uh, area of resistance up here has turned the markets back. I really would like to see one more day of trading of, of non-holiday um, volume. In other words, those these last two weeks have been have been uh, uh, you know your your uh, your holiday weeks that uh, just I don't know I I, I don't know how much um, stock no 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 pun intended I put in some of the moves that occurred over the past two weeks and you can see uh, if you back out on this chart you can see where is we were in these very well-defined channels all back here when, when, when there was a lot of active trading. Then all of a sudden we hit the holidays and it's just kind of, bleh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of lost its shape and form. So that said, let's go back to the 10-minute chart here. Um, there was uh, 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 another uh, trend line that I drew over the weekend that is over this low back on the 21st and also this low back on the end of the day on the 28th. And if, if that line has any effect whatsoever, then uh, once we get uh, uh, trading uh, tomorrow on the 3rd, let's see if we get a bounce. Um, I still think this mid-1260 area uh, is going to present a problem for the S&P, and I think this high 1270 area uh, will likely present an even greater problem uh, for the S&P. But I will say this, if the market can get through this, then it's, it's almost a, I, I wouldn't want to say a sure thing because there's no such thing as a sure thing, but I, I, th I think we are likely, we would likely then head up at least to the low 1300s, and this could also uh, be setting up a a test, actually, of the 1370 high uh, back in the spring of 2011. And the reason I say that is if we look at a, uh, I think maybe a one-hour chart does it a little better. If we look at a one-hour chart, you can see that this this area here, right around this 1270, 1280, is essentially a neckline. Uh, and there are various interpretations, and I'm not going to say one is right and one is wrong. Um, I will say that this 1278-ish, uh, 1280, is the higher, or, or rather the highest of the three lines. So if the market can get over that, then I would uh, then I would be open to the uh, 
Uh, well, I think we need to see the chart for what it is, and it says this may be a continuation inverted head and shoulders pattern, and if it is, the target is up around 1380. So that's just what the chart is. Um, I, I tend to think that that may be a long shot, but, you know, sometimes what you feel and what the chart says are two distinctly different things. So uh, we, we have to just be mindful of that and, and not ignorant of that possibility. Additionally, uh, if we do seem to be setting up something like that, look what this whole thing may be. We come down and we set that uh, uh, 1080 low. It could be that this is something of a channel uh, that, that uh, after that steep corrective Oh, I would say corrective move after the crash under uh, uh, 1260 that uh, culminated in, well, a pain, I don't want to say culminated, may have culminated in that uh, uh, 1080 low. If this market can get back over this little cluster right here, then we may be setting up more strength uh, to start off 2012. I'm just saying that's what the chart looks like. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Uh, additionally, you need to be aware of the fact that uh, if this resistance does turn the markets back down, then this rising green line right here uh, that is that would roughly be in the low 1200s, if that gets taken out at some point uh, in January or February, wherever it may happen, is that line is ascending then I think that's probably going to be setting up a retest down of those 1080 lows. So what's all this saying? Well, obviously, for the past, what, one, two, three, four, five, six months, the markets have just been trying to seek out a sense of, of direction. And at times, the, this chart has looked very, very bearish and Folks, at times it turns and it starts to look like, well, wait a minute, this this could be somewhat bullish here. And and I think that may be typical of this kind of a consolidation um, pattern and the kind of consolidation patterns that we've seen over the past months. And what I mean by that is consolidations will keep you guessing uh, until they break. So... That's kind of what's uh, what I see in 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 the in the uh, intermediate term. Now let's look and and do our little weekly thing, and and again all of this is kind of predicated upon the fact that that as I mentioned the um, the the kind of volume we've been having over the over the uh, holidays may not really uh, be the most trustworthy. Add to that the fact that. Uh, that uh, the, the way people structure their trading, the, what they might do in the way of uh, 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 possibly a tax loss. Of course, uh, as I understand it, your tax loss uh, would have had, that, that trade would have uh, had to have been made at a point in time to where your, uh, to where your, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I must be getting too old. Um, to where your settlement date. Uh, so anyway, that aside, uh, look, on uh, the 23rd, we were identifying this area up here in the 1260s as uh, likely resistance. And even though the 27th went sideways on that line, it looked like it could possibly be consolidating for an upwards move to the 1270s. Instead, on the 28th, we get a, a, a fairly strong sell-off. Um, and not, not, a, not a, uh, anything catastrophic. But, but clearly a sign that, no, this is resistance. Then the market started to, tr to, to uh, mount a little bit more of an attack on that. But once again, it looks like this descending uh, teal line. Um, and if you want to see where that's from, we can look at it. It's, it. It goes over this top and also over this top back in, uh, in uh, late October. So it looks like that descending teal line uh, exerted a, a little bit of influence, and the market just couldn't quite get over that. Um, 
I'm not, again, that concerned with the break of this little red line right here. Let's see if this uh, pinkish line, we'll call it salmon, this salmon colored line, see if maybe this produces a little bit of a bounce on, uh, on Tuesday uh, the 3rd. If it does, then I, I, I think we could slog sideways for a bit, but you know, it's the first trading day of the year. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I will say this, there is more resistance closer to us as overhead resistance where the market is now at roughly 1258. There is more resistance <coughs> just over our heads than there is support just under our feet, unless you count this little line right here. Um, if we get through this line, then look for the low 1230s. If the low 1230s breaks, then then uh, look for support in the low 1200s. So what I would consider fairly strong support is probably about 45 to 50 points underneath us. And what I would consider pretty st strong resistance is, uh, is about 12 to 13 points above us. So I think that that means we should be a little bit predisposed towards, uh, towards uh, some downward pressure throughout the first week. But you know, there's always the January effect. So where we sit right here, uh, I, 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 I would be foolish to rule out that this resistance could not be taken out. So again, I guess that, uh, I guess that means I'm kind of sitting on the fence with the neutral posture uh, for the third. Want to see how that first day goes in 2012. And uh, then we'll hopefully be able to pick up on a little bit clearer signals once the volume returns to this market. Because this, this past week has been just, just a wee tad uh, sloppy. We've had a couple things that were nice. For example, on the 28th, when we saw this little descending wedge kind of form uh, throughout most of the day on the 28th, that was a good signal that we called for at least a, a, a some uh, buying to resume on the 29th. But that just couldn't quite hold out. So if if uh, if on the third this pink line breaks, then it's probably going to be a fairly down day. Uh, however, if if it can get up over this 1260s, if we get up. Uh, over that, then we may mount an attack on 1278, and if that gets taken out, then hey guys, you know, we could be uh, we could be in for a bullish run to start 2012. It's possible. Again, when you look at that uh, potential inverted head and shoulders pattern right here, I don't think you can ignore that. So look, armed with that, I hope you guys have a great uh, 2012. Uh, if you're a subscriber, I want to thank you for subscribing. If you're not, I want you to consider that uh, for this new year. Um, I'll be honest with you. The past number of months here have been some of the toughest to chart. And it is, I don't feel totally good about everything that, that I have uh, uh, come up with in the charts over, over the past four or five months. But, you know, I think we've done pretty darn well. And uh, if you can be quick and nimble on your feet and, and, you, and you know your risk tolerance, uh, I think this market has a good bit to offer in that volatility. But if you can't, and if you get, if you get uh, uh, cold feet and buyer's remorse and all those negative emotions that tend to separate people from their money, then uh, you might do kind of what I've done. I've just kind of played it light in through all this. Uh, to be honest with you, I, in retrospect, I look back on the calls and I say I should have gone all in on 80% of the calls I made. But, uh, you know, at the time they're made, the calls, you, you have to realize in all this volatility, I'm kind of an emotional guy. And in all of that volatility, um, I, I get a little bit emotionally turned off in, in this kind of action. So uh, let's see if maybe we develop something that's a little bit clearer sailing without so many twists and turns. That's what I would look forward to in 2012. And, uh, but at any rate, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this video. And uh, if you get a chance, stop on by sp500chart.com. And if you're thinking about subscribing, check it out. Less than a cheap cup of coffee per day. 
and you get a daily technical analysis video of the S&P 500. And uh, Happy New Year. Take care.